Hello and welcome to IGN Anime Club episode 69. Yay anime. Yay, Yay anime. anime. It's a full room? What is this? <laughs> what? After weeks of weirdness? We live. We're like, yeah, <laughs> sort of. Sort yeah, of. sort of. <laughs> Lots of shots of medicine. <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna do that. <laughs> no, that's a bad that, idea. Don't take shots of cough I mean, I don't medicine. Know you guys medicine, know. you know. Yeah, it's kind of just good. We're all dying. Is our point? Please some help. <laughs> you don't like that Baptist cocktail, of Nyquil? <laughs> <laughs> oh God. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. So things have been kind of crazy around here. So sorry for the delay, guys. We kind of ironing things out. Um, if you do, just a quick note participate in the watch party or you like to send in questions to us before we record during the week we've changed our recording times to monday afternoons so if you guys want to get comments in for the watch party or something please send them in before then mm -hmm. before yeah. we just record on tuesdays but now it's monday mm -hmm. you so know? we will still be airing on wednesdays yeah, so, so it should be the normal airing time uh but we had to shift to afternoons because it's just better craziness. for us we're Real. dying yeah. <laughs> yeah. so we're really sacrificing late. ourselves for you yeah. <laughs> true story yeah, so before we get started, I just wanted to give a shout out to a wonderful fan who sent us anime, which is the sweetest thing ever. The letter is so sweet. Yeah, um, he assigned us homework, Yes, but in the oh. best way possible to watch Strawberry Marshmallow, and I am super excited. I want to eat a strawberry marshmallow. So Dude, we got a really nice good. long email, but I'm not going to read it all because it's very personal, and we're going to keep that for us, but thank you so much for... Uh, Randy Alvarado for sending it to us. Yes, also. thank you. Yeah, that thanks. was super, super sweet. <laughs> sweet. Our fans are the best. Can I just say, like, they give us the most heartfelt letters, and our Facebook group is the best. Mm -hmm. We're so lucky. Did we got soda so one time, lucky. right? Yeah, oh, yeah, right. we got ramen. We yeah. actually have a new p a Pikachu child here at the front. We got at our IGN house party. If you're not watching the video, you yeah. should be because it's so cute. Probably, where, where can they watch this video? <laughs> the Xbox app, the PS4 app, on desktop. You could find IGN in a lot of places. Anyway. <laughs> also find us on our own YouTube channel. That's right. YouTube.com right. slash Anime Club. Mm -hmm. Very easy to find. Easy peasy. Put that out there. But Miranda and I, first of all, it was late into the watch party. Um, not watch party. House, house party. party. House party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead. It's too many parties gone. Um, house party <laughs> is an event uh, that IGN does for, for different occasions this time. Mm -hmm. It was our 20th anniversary as a website. Um, and we were, a bunch of us were on stage and we got to do a lot of cool things and talk to fans. And Miranda and I were at the photo booth and like just blasted. And <laughs> <laughs> we drank a lot. It was, it look, was needed. <laughs> look, we all thought it was a 45 minute open bar. But it wasn't. It was all night. And so oh, for 45 man. minutes, everyone was like, we Drink only have so 45 much. minutes. And then after 45 minutes went up, it was like, oh, wait, we have the whole night. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> drink responsibly. Nice. Uh, actually, I was I was doing like I was on a good pace all night. It was good. Um, <laughs> but so we almost cried because uh, it was just such a sweet gesture. Like this is one of his first Pikachus. Aww. And he wanted us to have it. It's so cute. Yeah, That's so, so thank sweet. you so much. And thank you for everyone who said hello at the 20th anniversary party. That was super awesome. Mm -hmm. IGN has the best fans. Yeah. I'm telling yeah. you, whenever the internet gets me down, and boy, does it get me oh. down, meeting actual fans is like, thank you. Thank you for supporting mm -hmm. us. Thank mm -hmm. you for being but there the for us. Is, you guys are the best. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There's other ones, but you guys are the best. Yeah. You guys are the best fans. And if you couldn't make it this time, hopefully there will be something you can make it to. Uh, we do often meet and greets at different events, so like different PAX events and stuff. Yeah. So yeah. if we come to your city, um, IGN probably has a meetup, and hopefully we'll get to see you. Yes, hopefully we'll one day have our own little live show. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> a lot of people are asking uh, about it. Anime yeah. Club episode 100 is coming up, That's but true. we'll see what we can do for that. Like, yeah. we have no idea, but I have backup plans just in case, and I'm playing some cool things that involve you guys because you're such a big part of the show. Like, it's called the Anime Club for a reason. It doesn't mean it's just about us, it's about you guys too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we love well, now you. Now I'm all warm and fuzzy. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Oh, God, I love you all so much. Yes. Anyway, if you want to join our happy, great group of wonderfulness, it's facebook.com slash group slash IGN Anime Club, the official anime club group. So, yeah, join that and talk to us. There's Yay. another 245 people. Yeah. Like, I was about to it's say. It's getting crazy. <laughs> that was so quick. I can't keep up, guys. So, on that note, if you see bots please, or spammers, please let please us know. Repo please report the spam. And mm -hmm. don't feel bad if you reach out to me on Twitter and, like, there's, like, a really gross spam bot video and you tell me it needs to be deleted, it's totally fine. Please bother me. Yes. Yeah. Or I want to want this to be as friendly, fan friendly, yeah. and happy as the possible. The more people we have in the group, because we're approaching 10,000, I think, now we're, we're Ooh, getting there. Wow, I think we have crazy. like 8,000 something. Yes. Close where you get to 10,000 <laughs> and, and beyond that. Beyond. Uh, <laughs> Not here. <No. laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, 
the harder it's going to be to catch bots. So thank you to everybody who reports yeah. those. People. Thank you guys so much. And thank you for making such a great community. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm just so happy so to be back. Before we start <laughs> crying, I guess we'll move on. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's cry tears of joy. Yeah. So good. Well, that, was, that would have been tears of joy. Well, that's true, too. But, like, oh, yeah. more tears of joy. Just, yeah. just continue Different to kind. Cry. So, <laughs> finally, Dragon Ball Super, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yes. out time. It's been... Oh, a long time, like over a year. Yeah, we've been talking oh for a while. Oh my god, but yeah. I think it was like last summer we, it started. Now we can finally talk about Dragon Ball Super because everybody's <laughs> been asking, like, why don't you guys talk about it? Because mm -hmm. it's not licensed. Well, now it is. Yeah. yeah. So um, finally, when we all come back to life, we'll watch some Dragon Ball. <laughs> yeah. so, we, so it's streaming in a bunch of different places right now, mm -hmm. like Control and Daisuke and Anime Lab, other, Anime Lab, mm -hmm. and a few other places. Um, but they started in the newest arc. Yeah. So it's at like episode 36 or something. Yeah, it starts in the future trunks 40. arc or something. Yeah. And yeah. to like the most recent was like episode 46. I don't know exactly yeah. where it started, mm -hmm. but there's gonna be the first 10 episodes, I know at least on Crunchyroll for sure, um, on October 30th. 30th. I think it's 30th. Yeah, so yeah. Yes. the rollout's kind of weird. It's starting with recent stuff and then they're going to like backfill it with old episodes, mm -hmm. which I guess makes sense because maybe they figure... Like I, this is just speculation on my part, but maybe they figured that people were watching fan subs or watching it in other ways or getting it in other ways, and it's like, oh well, now that it's legal, here's the most recent episode, well, and then just slowly backfilling it. Yes. I don't know. I feel like mm -hmm. that's confu like a confusing way to do it for those people who are not up to. Well, sure, it's well, yeah, it's confusing but, as, yeah. as heck, but uh, <laughs> <Are they laughs> nice doing, evasion. Do they confirm dub right? Doing oh, they, oh, they got to be no dub, dub in the sub. Confirmed. Darn. They got to be doing it though. I can't imagine with Crunchyroll and Funimation. Teaming up. The question is, who's gonna be who? Who knows? Uh, they have that tease, like from the but one voice actor at one do, time. Yeah. I, yeah, I want to say sub. So that's good. Yeah, I got a sub. Yeah. Anything is good at this point. <laughs> now, <laughs> now we can finally talk about the fact that Goku has never kissed Chi Chi because <laughs> I saw this on Tumblr and there was a whole thing where Trunks gave someone mouth to mouth and Goku was like, whoa, Trunks, you put your mouth on hers? And he was like, yeah. And Vegeta was like, you've never done that? And Goku was like, no, of course not. Wait, don't and they it's have like, a you have two kids? Yeah, I was going to say, what, what do you do? Are you sure that it's his <laughs> own? Like, no, I'm not sure. Like, are, are those really his kids? Because something seems that's, to be missing. That's awkward. Well, I mean, you don't. <laughs> I mean, you don't have, I mean, you don't have, no, you don't have to, to kiss. have children. <laughs> no, you don't. But I'm just saying, it's a really odd. It's a really odd. Maybe, just, maybe he just doesn't like kissing. I just really would like maybe to have he, a word with Goku. Is he like grossed <laughs> up by mouse or something? Maybe like, saliva. I don't, I don't know. Try, I'm trying to remember now. Life or death situations. Blinking. I don't know. I just I'm reading the manga and I just know that their their marriage was like you promised to marry me. Oh yeah, I guess I I guess I did. I think I, I remember that. When you were like ten and I was like. 14 and I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to be Bunny Bulma for Halloween, so I'm just really excited about all this Dragon Ball stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah, we'll finally. definitely get on that. Mm -hmm. Finally. Yeah. Um, but other things have been airing. Many other oh, things. Oh, God, yeah. <sighs> Too many things. <laughs> it's fall. Guess what? You know how we know? Because we're all dying because of video games. Yeah. This, this uh, <laughs> happened last year, too. This happens. Surprise. This is going to happen, but fall uh, has been really fun for me so far watching fall anime yeah i mean between shows. video games and anime mm -hmm. they've yeah. all been great mm -hmm. yeah, so pretty good fall yeah oh yeah really excited and tired fall is <laughs> best season but we so last time so this is our part two of the fall yes, yes. Uh, last episode which was like probably recorded like six months ago <laughs> and by now um, <laughs> <laughs> i really want to bounce off what you guys were talking about before with keijo with keijo oh. yes bounce yeah so well, i actually it. finished the first episode <laughs> Oh, you, you, did, you hadn't finished it? No, I watched I'm, the first I, I, two. <laughs> I, 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 so I stopped after like the first two minutes because it was too much. And then, uh, but I went back and it wasn't so too bad. I just want to say, I like Keijo. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a problem with it. They're all, so, so I think the best thing, they're biggest all, thing. they're all adults. Choice words. Yeah. Hmm? What? Yeah. <laughs> what? Uh, the biggest the thing. Biggest thing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, continue. We're all dying. Uh, <laughs> Um, they're all uh, over 18. Mm -hmm. The main girl, Nozomi, Nozomi um, is 18. And uh, that's just really unusual for anime. And mm -hmm. so for a fan service um, centered anime, that 
it was just a nice thing to be like, oh, they're adults and they act like adults and they have goals. And, and like, this is also a profession. I know it's like a really yeah. weird sport thing, but this is something they've chosen to go into and to do because they want to make they, money. They weren't roped <laughs> into things. it or like bamboozled or yeah. like, like it's not like. Like it's a legitimate sport. Well, kind of. yeah, I mean, like obviously you could rationalize it. It is just created for fan service, but sure. like at least in, in the universe. Uh, basically, you don't know what Keijo is. It's a sport in this universe uh, where it's played in a pool on like floating, what's called the land, mm-hmm. and it's sort of like sumo in that you have to knock your opponent off of the, or like out of the platform so they would go into the water off the land. Uh, but you can only use your boobs and your butt. Um, well, no hands and no feet. No hands and no feet, so but like yeah, hip checking yeah. is how you, how you, this is the way to go, right? <laughs> yeah. So. Um, I mean, obviously, like, somebody made that up. Like, you know it would be cool? If girls had to fight each other with their butts. But, like, <laughs> I like that, you know, there's different body types in Keijo. There's... Mm-hmm. I was so happy when there's someone was flat-chested. I was like, yes! yes! There was someone... There's someone who's silly, flat-chested. But... There's someone who's not flat-chested. So, there's... there's <laughs> Oh, my God. There's, like, this buff chick who's, like, Zarya status. And, I, <laughs> and she's, like, supposed to be, like, hot stuff. And I was like, yeah, buff chick! <laughs> Like you just go. You, there's no buff chicks in anime that aren't like supposed to be a butt of a joke. So I was really excited about that. Yeah, and to be clear, like a big thing about this too is you're going in knowing what you're gonna get. It's mm-hmm. not some so. surprise. It's not like they're trying to be deceptive about what, how they want to angle their fans. It's like no, this is like an etchy, and it's real dumb, and it's real dumb. It looks like it hurts a lot, but <laughs> <laughs> it's silly. But I kind of want to try it. I want to try <laughs> Keijo. Like I kind of want to. See, I would just die. I feel like I feel like I could. I feel like I'd get really fierce at it. So there's oh. this one girl who was gonna be a like pro judo player or something, but she's a <gasps> Flatchester girl, and was like, "No, I'm gonna do Keijo instead." So that's what's really cool about this show. And after seeing the full episode for the first episode, I kind of dig it, and it's because of those the techniques. Oh, those techniques <laughs> they use, which is really like it was a. Um, she doesn't. She has a you know flat chest, but she like. She had the illusion. <laughs> she, like, uh, she did like a, like some weird misdirection, and then, <laughs> and then her butt, her butt like came her out of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what? And then like, and her monologues and stuff. Like, oh, this is this yeah. is sports anime. I, I love the yandere pink haired girl who is like. Oh yeah, that girl. She's like, oh, you want to go? And she like <laughs> just she just turns evil. Like she's very sweet, and then yeah, she's yeah. just like evil and just like knocks people out by hitting them in like the jugular. I was like, yeah. She like actually she, like, knocks people out. out of, like, yeah. not unconscious. Like, yeah. I, I was <laughs> like, where's the lifeguard? These people are going to drown. Yeah, um, that yeah, was my it, concern. It, yeah. Also, Keijo is a betting sport. So it's like you're betting oh. on who's going to win, sort mm-hmm. of like uh, horse racing or something like that. So I thought that was interesting, too, where like, like you have to go into it. If you're the underdog, you could make somebody a lot of money. <laughs> like, <laughs> there's a lot of cool things. <laughs> and then I wanted to do the Keijo workout. Where they have to do like butt walks, where they have to like walk on their butt, and then they have like to, a thing that toddlers do. Yeah, they have to do like crab walking basically, and then like crazy squats and like all this oh stuff. And God. I'm like, I want a Kajo butt. Are really good. I want the Kajo workout. Out. Yeah. I only watched the first episode, and I don't know if I'm gonna watch too much more of it, just because it's like not really my thing. Like it's it's fine if that's mm-hmm. what you want to watch, but I, I'm like so short on time, and there are other things that I'm more interested in that yeah. I'm probably gonna pass on it exactly. for watching one or two more shows. But it does its thing. I'm probably it's gonna funny. watch a couple more episodes, and then if it's the same thing over and over again, I'll drop it. But mm-hmm. uh, I am intrigued, and I want to see where it's going. Yeah. There was a whole thing about teamwork in the second episode. It was really nice. Aren't they <laughs> supposed to be like against each other though? Well, they were doing team building epi- okay. exercises, okay. Okay. and it was really good. And there's a quiet girl, and she needs confidence. <laughs> and I was just really happy. <laughs> so. <laughs> I oh, nice. It's very silly. So Keijo, okay. It's definitely my palate cleanser after I watch Westworld, which is ah. true crazy. That's, a That's fair. One. Yeah. <laughs> or Black Mirror. Oh, you're not even. No, nope. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, what what else, else you watch? I mean, you, it's been a while since you've been on. Yeah. So what have you um, been watching aside from Keijo? One of my favorites has been Magical Girl Raising Project because I love magical girls. <laughs> and so this one as we talked about before, is kind of like a battle royale magical girl thing. So like you have all these different girls and they're like become magical girls through this app. <laughs> so it's a game oh, and they're only. playing it. So there's a game that's oh, playing there's these okay. rumors going around that if you play long enough, certain people will be chosen to be turned into actual magical girls. 
and then it happens. And so what the magical girls do, they have one unique ability that they can do to go help other people, of course. That's mm-hmm. what magical girls do. Mm-hmm. Um, what are these abilities? So there's one, Snow White. She can hear people when they need help. Wait, she that's, just her, hears people. that's her name? Yeah, Snow White. It's just her magical girl name. Oh, it? magical girl name. Okay, got so it. Is that what Snow White actually does or is her name just <laughs> Snow White? Birds? Yeah, she hears all the, the birds no, and yeah. the okay. yeah, so she's just, and That's just her name all right. for some reason. Yeah. And <laughs> she's, she's like super pure and she's like, oh, I'm like, like the pure magical girl and she's the main character and she's just trying to help people. Um, and when you help people, you get candies. So it's like game. So it's, it's like Pokemon Go. Yeah. <laughs> Which is weird. <laughs> Except instead of catching things. Magical so Girl get, Go. <laughs> yeah. Um, and oh. then there's like a witch magical girl and I forget <gasps> what her name is. I always, I forget all their names because they don't <laughs> say them a lot. Mm. And like when they do, it's like very brief because there's a lot of them. There okay. are 16, 15, what? 16? What? Oh, so it's yeah. like an idol group. So there's like oh, quite geez. a few of them. Uh, except I remember, never mind. Anyway, <laughs> um, so like there's a witch one and her, her thing is that she's like really fast and there's a ninja magical girl. Like it's really weird. And yeah, like it's they're they're not your typical magical girl. I like in, that though. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, different it's abilities. Really cool. um, and her thing is that she can't miss with her shuriken. And then there's a <laughs> Western magical girl. She's <laughs> it's I, I her name. <laughs> yeah, but she's got she's like super skimpy outfit. And she's got like guns, and she's like really fierce, and she's mean to everybody, oh, wow. and everyone so is. She's like friend today. The cosplay <laughs> candidate. She was just downing Jack Daniel's whiskey as I think. Wait, I'm on board with this show. Girl. This show Queen. is really good. Okay, <laughs> I mean it's not phenomenal. Like it doesn't keep its pace super well sometimes, but it's still I really really enjoy it. Nice. Um, and the thing is that these magical girls don't know each other's identities, and they are not all just like school girls. Some of them are adults. Some of them are <gasps> may not be women. And it's just like really cool thing is that it goes past just that you you have to be this to be a magical girl. It's like no, like this might be an adult, like this might be not, you know, a woman. Like it's kind of cool. gender nonconformity. Yeah, and so I <laughs> love that it's variety. Cool. And That's then, fantastic. Of course, the big conflict comes in when the people or the creature in charge of them is is called like Fav. It's just like Fav? a demon weird thing. It's like. Monokuma and Kube mixed. Whoa. Because wow. um, it offers them a contract. <laughs> and now it's just like, hey, sorry, there's too many magical girls in this area. We need to cut you guys down to half. And so that their thing now is whoever has the least candies by the end of the week gets kicked off the team. Oh, okay. oh I thought you were going to say gets killed. That was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was about different to say. show. <laughs> they do. Well, they, what? Which is like a thing. It's in the synopsis. It's not a spoiler. Um, oh, okay. But yeah, so they lose their powers, they die. And so it's like this conflict of like, what are they supposed to do? Because like, their magical girls are supposed to be like helping each other kind of thing. But do they really gonna help each other? Oh, now it's like that's a fight for so their life. cool. That is amazing. That's like, and, the, yeah. like wow. capitalism magical girls. Like capitalism? <laughs> yeah. Like, so, like, or like Battle Royale or something. Yeah. So even though it's like kind of cute and sweet, it's, it is a little bit more adult. And I really like that. And it's been a lot of fun the first, past three episodes. Four? Three, four? Um, oh, cool. But I've really enjoyed it. It's the one I've been keeping up with for sure. Nice. I'm going to check that out. I am too. Sounds cool. Yeah, so check that out. Um, the other one I've really liked is Girlish Number. I don't know if anyone else has watched it. Um, so it's about voice acting. And it's about this girl mm-hmm. who gets her in through her brother who's like a talent manager. And so she's just like, uh, I don't want to be here, but I'll do it. <laughs> and then she lands. I only watched the first episode. And the second episode just came out. Um, and she lands like this huge role. And she's like a newbie. And she's like, okay. And it's just kind of about the arrogance and like the weird attitudes and like the silliness of the show business. And it's kind of a negative satirical take on all of it. And it's just really funny. Um, the guy who wrote Snafu wrote this. So this oh. is a light novel by him. Oh, cool. And so I, I think it's a guy. Anyway, I highly recommend it. It's cool and it's pretty. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say about that because I haven't really watched too much of it. Um, and then the other one that I think not as many people have been watching is Flip Floppers, which I think I Kelly used to I've heard yeah. a lot about this. I haven't watched it. I watched the t- first two episodes. I love it so much. Yeah. It's really pretty. I like it's gorgeous. The animation. Um, like Isetta pretty or? Uh, or? No, it's different it's from a, Isetta. Okay. Uh, Very different art style. Yeah, it's it's sort of a simplistic art style, so they can do a lot of crazy stuff, it seems, because there's, uh, they it's the, about these two girls who go adventuring in this kind of alternate dimension. Um, but in order to get there, they have to um, have, they have to like, have the same feeling or the same goal or something um and then they transport together 
to this other dimension and go on adventures, but they're really dangerous. Um, As one would does. Yeah. <laughs> so I I liked it. I liked the second episode more than the first, so I'm going to keep watching it because I feel like I'll keep enjoying it more. Yeah. The first episode's good, and then it just gets better. Yeah, because the, the second episode was... Um, so the first episode kind of happens really suddenly. There's It reminded me of like a lot of Manic Pixie Dream Girl stories where... Um, there's a schoolgirl who's like, she's like, I don't know what I want to do and where I want to go to college or where I want to go anywhere. And um, but she's really brilliant. And so she's just kind of like thinking about it. And then she meets this crazy, weird girl who doesn't <laughs> have any inhibitions. And she rides a surfboard in the sky. And then <laughs> as one does. Yeah. <laughs> and so it had the, it has this it definitely struck me as like a manic pixie story where like you've come to save me from my doldrum you know, ridden life where I just don't know who I am and you've come to teach me who I am. And so that's what it felt like in the okay. first episode. And then the second episode uh, got away from that a little more and it seemed more two-way. It seemed that surfboard girl, her name is Papika, not not Paprika, Papika. <laughs> and then there's Kokona. And I feel like half the show is just them saying each other's names. Um, <laughs> they do say each other's names a lot. They say it a lot. But then you don't forget their names. That's true. Then, so I cannot not forget their names. <laughs> well, yeah, that's why I remembered it wasn't Paprika, because I heard Papika so many times. Um, but yeah, so it seemed more mutual and more of a two-way street in the second episode, so I'm going to keep watching it, um, because my irritation in the first episode like started to rise a little bit. I was like, hmm, stop saying coconut. And then the second episode, I was like, oh, wait, this really weird land they went to is super cool and the art is amazing and like they do this color palette switch and it's just oh so pretty it's such a great fantastical show and mm-hmm. that they go to these really weird worlds that are reminiscent of other things kind of like the second one's a little out more alice in wonderlandy and has different very like iconic art pieces just mm-hmm. built in throughout the world just like randomly there um which will see if you watch it you're like oh i know what that is yeah um and it's just really really imaginative and fun and that's what i like about it and it's also really lighthearted. episode three is real good it's so good all right gotta watch that so <laughs> my favorite thing is that they mix a lot of popular culture with it and like the next one can i tell you it's a matter yeah it's mad max <laughs> and magical girls wait so, what? so <laughs> i was gonna ask about this because i <laughs> saw so I saw on Twitter there was a Crunchyroll feature that said Flip Flappers, Mad Max meets Ma- Magical Girls, and that's why I started watching it. And I was like, where's Whoa. the Mad Max, though? <laughs> okay, third episode. Going to watch it because I love Mad Max. Yeah, it's about them going to these worlds and collecting, I'm not exactly sure what it is, like a, like a, a seed, a glowing thing. And that they're oh, those trying, shards that yeah, it's like a shard yeah. thing that they're supposed to go and collect from a thing that is essentially messing up this world, and so they're kind of just going in, helping, getting out, returning the thing, oh. and that's what they're supposed to do. So, yeah. interesting. Anyway, okay, that's very pretty. <laughs> I'm really, I, I suggest it. Yeah, I'm really excited. It's, it's if, I guess what I would say because I didn't think the first episode was super for me. Like it wasn't, uh, like I liked it, but I wasn't crazy about it. But then I think if you have a similar experience, maybe uh, try episode two and then I guess episode three because so I got that. I got three. episode three rule of three and then see where you like it because I I thought two was a big improvement over one yeah. yes cool yeah. keep going right. what are you guys watching uh I just want to I know we already talked about this a little bit but I haven't been here so I quickly wanted to mm-hmm. throw my vote in also for Izetta yeah. which yeah. I absolutely love not only because it's gorgeous but I, I love this one I was yeah. like this is for Megan yeah yeah this is, <laughs> so there are two reasons one it revolves around two powerful female characters, but they're believably capable. They're not just like, hey, I've got all these crazy magic powers. I can do whatever I want. Like there's the fourth episode explains like how is that his powers work? Mm-hmm. And I liked the exclamation exclamation? Exclamation <laughs> exclamation point of how her powers worked and how she has to uh, weave them into the actual military action that's going on in the show. I also love that it's very historically based, even though it's like an alternative timeline. Mm-hmm. It's all about World it's War like II. It's like, you know what's going on. Yeah, you yeah, know yeah. what's going yeah. on. Germania <laughs> is invading <laughs> Europa, uh-huh. and they need Britannia yeah. to, you know, this little tiny city-state needs Britannia to help them. But I just, I love the fact that the Princess Fine is just such a capable leader. Like, oh, yeah. she's mm-hmm. really smart, she's politically savvy, she's kind, but she's also stoic. And then you have Izetta, who's kind of naive and goofy, but extremely capable in battle as well. Like, she rides an anti-tank rifle around, like a broom. 
that's awesome. That's cool. I love yeah. that so much. And it's surprisingly violent. Like, it gets really gritty in a couple of episodes. Mm-hmm. Like, again, it, this witch can't just solve all their problems. Yeah. They have to fight, too. And so it's a little bit about that weird juxtaposition of trench warfare meets modern military technology. Love mm-hmm. it. I am super about Izetta, also. It's it so has good. everything. War. Yes. World War II. <laughs> yeah. Witches. Mm-hmm. Political intrigue. A little bit of fan service. I was a little bit annoyed by some of the fan service in episode four, but I was like, you know what? Let's just get this out of the way. It kind of has to, like, I resign to the fact that anime tends to do that when it doesn't need Mm -hmm. to, but it's not terrible. I just really love World War II stories. And I I just find it interesting um, seeing the uh, European theater through an anime lens, just Mm -hmm. because... um, like we're, we're we're much more familiar if you watch a lot of anime with kind of like the fallout of World War II in the Pacific theater, right? Um, like that's you know Akira and a bunch of other things, a ton, um, of, other a ton things. of other things. Yeah. I mean, yeah. obviously it's a for good reason, a, a, a critical events. So there's going to be a lot of a lot of um, art made about it, and um, but I always find it interesting seeing what uh, the Japan centered take on the other theater of World War II is like. Um, and I just really love learning about World War II, even if it's an alternate history. I'm just like, yeah. that anti-tank gun looks sick. It looks <laughs> sick, and I know that there's some people nitpicking the historical accuracy of stuff. It's an alternate timeline. It's an alternate timeline, it's an alternate timeline and it's a fantasy show. Yeah. And there's a witch! There's a yeah. witch! <laughs> what do you want? So, I mean, if you love history, and you love fantasy, and you love empowered females with a little bit of yuri going on, possibly... Check the show out. Hey, speaking of Yuri. Speaking of Yuri. Sorry, Yuri. <laughs> Can we talk about Yuri on Ice, Everybody's please? Everybody's favorite. Oh, my God. Yeah. Is it's, it your favorite mic? It's up there. Okay, uh, that's fine. It's, yeah, yeah. I can accept yeah, that's, yes. <laughs> that's, that's okay. We're, we're bringing it back around to fan service and, and yeah. Uh, 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 okay. Same. <laughs> have we all, have we all yeah. watched episode three? Three, yes. yes. If you have yeah. not watched episode three, just wait like a minute. I just got to say something really fast. I love that it totally, I was, I screamed when he's like, I don't, you know, this is more me. I'm going to be the most beautiful woman in town. I was like, yes, Yuri. Yes. You break those gender roles. You just break all those walls. You be you. You be the most beautiful woman in town. Like, I was so happy that like, that was him being sexy. It was like, was not trying to be the playboy, but to be the woman who seduces him. Oh my God, I, I died. Love, I love that swerve too, where he goes to, I can't think of her name right now, but the, he goes to her apartment and is like, I need you to teach me something. It's I was true. like, yeah. I thought it was gonna be the quad. I thought it was yeah. gonna oh, be yeah, something no, else altogether. I was oh, like, how teach to, me how to be a man. Oh. <laughs> oh. I didn't think that was Megan. I thought it was the quad. <laughs> and I, thought I, thought I was like, thinking too, like he probably just wants to go practice it to like impress, yeah, like, no. oh, he lands it. Yeah. No. No, but, I, I went there. <laughs> oh, I didn't even think about that, uh, surprisingly. Um, no, I was, oh, when he comes out and he like skates in the ice and he looks at Victor and Victor just, the low whistle. <laughs> whistle? The low whistle. <laughs> I love uh, Victor so much. So I normally would be a Yurio person, but he is 15. So Victor's my man, but Yurio's my son. <laughs> little angry, angry kitten boy. Just like, oh. When he's doing, he's like bouncy and angry, and he's like, hmm. he makes all these cute, cute little faces I when he's know, agitated. He's so cute. He's so cute. Cats. Great. I love oh, yeah. him. I love him. I love the ending with uh, like the Instagram scrolling through the oh, Instagram. Oh yes. yeah. the, the opening so, and the ending always is. Really. Yuri on Ice has an Instagram account where they post the what? actual Instagram photos that they post on the show. So oh my god, oh, that's really cool. That's, cool. that's genius. <laughs> yeah, Victor, he's so perfect. <laughs> That's what we think about your own ice. Yes. <laughs> so, so good show. Good. It's if you beautiful. like ice skating, it's really good. But if you like, if you like shipping, oh, anime yeah. style, it's oh, really good. Yeah. Even Victor, Victor and Yuri. Mm. 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 Is this working like oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, In addition to that, like I have so much fun with that, but I do want to say that I, I think it handles. I think I talked about this the last time we talked about it, um, but just three episodes in, I love how it deals with the feeling of I've been working my whole life for this and I don't really know why anymore and I don't know what I'm doing mm. and and somebody else who's like I'm so gifted at this but I don't have any inspiration and then I, I just I think that working that in is really relatable and I like that they're dealing with that and I'm really excited to see how all three of them um, 
grow together, like in tandem, how their uh, different ways of growing and their different problems intersect. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think there's also like a lot of interesting things about the show, but then I'm like, ah. <laughs> and it's like, of, of, of course, aside from the constant fanning and <laughs> cuteness, but like, there's other things too. Yeah, there's yeah, other yeah. good things about it. They're important though. And beautiful yeah. music. Like the animation is beautiful. fantastic. Oh, yeah. Eros. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, good. Let's let's change the pace a little bit to something violent <laughs> and intense. <laughs> okay, uh, Drifters. Uh, I've not watched. I, I've only seen the first episode. It's interesting. I was not into it until the twist happened, and then ah, I was like, "Yes, yeah, all right, I'm on board. Like, yeah. I'm interested now." I do mm-hmm. think it's interesting because it is based on actual real historical figures mm-hmm. from Japan. And I liked that. I was like, oh, I actually looked them up. And I was like, oh, I didn't know that this person was actually from this era. Yeah. Yeah, so what is the premise of Drifters? I've only seen a GIF. <laughs> like, I don't <laughs> even know what it's about. So it starts off with a quasi-famous samurai from uh, the Battle of Sekigahara, <gasps> who is dying on the battlefield like mm-hmm. he did in real life. But he goes, instead of dying, he goes into this long white corridor, and there is this modern looking dude who basically sends him through another door where there's elves and like fantasy stuff okay. and he meets yeah. like Nobunaga. space time continuum yeah space time continuum yeah. yeah but Nobunaga's there Nobunaga's in a lot of shows this season by the way there's like one or two other shows where Nobunaga's a popular boy oh, yeah. he's very popular it's like <laughs> he Japan passed, so he patted my head once it was really good oh that's, that's true. right yes he did <laughs> oh right I yeah I'm very proud of okay. that Nobunaga has just just risen to prominence because there's Nobunaga's ambition. Nobunaga was in Civ Five and in Pokemon Conquest, I believe. Yeah, yes. everyone loves Nobunaga. Yeah, so but I'm like Japan. Really you have like oh, yeah. thousands of years of history. You have more than two or three. Like it doesn't always have to be Tokugawa Hideyoshi yeah. and Nobunaga. Yeah, yeah. You have That's you true. have other people. You have everyone mentioned in the history of Japan video, <laughs> which someone posted on the Facebook group recently. Thank I you. Love it. Yes, <laughs> I love that so much. Um, yeah, but like on. On the plus side, them having Nobunaga is, at least for non-Japanese people, I mean, like, of course, it's probably not made with that intention, but, like, identifiable. Because the thing is that if you don't know a lot about Japanese history, the first episode will be a little difficult with some of the characters and some of their importance until they really get into explaining some of the stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, it is very easy for a lot of it to just go over your head because it is so set and historical. Yeah. Like, yeah happenings and people and what happened with them at their battles and like the time when they died Mm -hmm. Um, I imagine it's how Hamilton is for people who didn't take U.S. history (laughs) (laughs) we're like wait who are you (laughs) so at least having someone who's like more kind of like that does help I think bridge that gap a little bit Um, how far did you get in Drifters? the first episode okay Um, it's so violent I know they do pull in other historical figures though because I saw like the thing at the end with the Roman people, I think. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. 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 So I know, like, well, there are other drifters from different times, which yeah. is which cool. is really cool. Uh, yes. Cult, yeah. Super and I like the cool. animation. The animation is really interesting. Yeah, it's uh, a yeah. Helsing. Yeah. The same dude. The same did that. Same. Um, yeah, I am interested, but I do not like its comedy at all. I yeah, the it's super annoying. It's jarring. Weird. Yeah. It's bad. Like, I'm just gonna mm-hmm. say it is not good. It is not timed it's, well. It's just it one just of those. Doesn't fit. Yeah, yeah. It's like we're getting serious, and then we flap back into these like silly caricatures of ourselves yelling in bright pink screens and it's just like yeah. no, no. Don't. yeah mm-hmm. wait like, they try to do no, a lot I wanted something planned. gritty and cool yeah no the first few minutes are just exactly that <laughs> no I just yeah. wanted like I wanted people getting cut up with swords mm-hmm. which which absolutely oh, happens but yeah. it's like I wanted that stuff yeah it starts don't, at the battle of Sekigahara there should yeah. be no bright pink anywhere unless there are cherry <laughs> blossoms at someone's funeral I, I don't think <laughs> or beautiful people walking in a park. Of yeah. like Bungo Stray Dogs. They did that a lot too in theirs, but I think the tone and the style of the show led to that a little bit more, so mm-hmm, it worked mm-hmm. better. Yeah. Um, but hopefully they tone that down. Like I know the first episode, you can, ne- you can never just tell with everything, but <laughs> it definitely breaks up the show a bit in not the best way. Yep. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, actually, speaking of uh, Bungo, uh, so I decided to catch up because yeah. season two yeah. is this fall or now. <laughs> uh, and uh, it's interesting. So what's different about season two is that, like the White Tiger and all those guys, they're the agency, not part of it so far. It's it's D- Dazai, mm-hmm. uh, the suicidal dude, and oh. it's his past. Is that so the white haired guy? It's the no no no. It's no. the one with. The, I only watched the first episode. It's the trench coat guy. Yeah, who's in the river? Yeah, he right. Keeps trying to commit suicide. Right. Yeah. Yes, I remember. Yeah. So it's uh, yes. it's, it's him when he's in the mafia. Okay. Oh, so, cool. Yeah, and it's actually I prefer the story a lot better. Like, there's t- they introduced two new characters. They're they're on the art for the season two. 
Um, and essentially he's just doing his job. He's, he's a, I think he just, he's like, you meet, you meet the, the leader and all that stuff. And he, he's just doing what he's been told. And there is a conspiracy with one of the members. And that's where it kind of goes. Like, there's no talk about the White Tiger. None of the agencies, like, I haven't seen any of them it's yet. like the past. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, cool. um, yeah, right now it's, uh, and also, like, the first season one, like, yeah, there was problems. At the very end, it kind of I think I picked up at the end. Like, got a little I got bit interested. better. Yeah. yeah, and then I dropped off the last few episodes just because I was busy and I wasn't interested yeah. enough to keep yeah. it up. Yeah. But no, maybe yeah. I'll go back to it. Yeah, no, yeah, season one's, it's okay. Uh, but, yeah, season two looks a lot better. Cool. And I'm going to keep up with it so far. Do you think you can jump in at season two? Like, will there be weird references that I won't get? Uh, I think you can, actually. Because I'm just thinking, time-wise, it sounds like I'd be much more interested in season two. Yes. Well, I mean, like I said, the, the two new characters aren't... They, they're not referenced from the first one. Okay. Um, none of the... I mean, they don't even talk about powers. It's just straight-up mafia stuff. Cool. So, people Rad. dying, guns... All the, you know, my two violence, yeah, everything, <laughs> everything, murder, everything mafia, murder, <laughs> mafia stuff. You know, anyway, but yeah. Um, so I'm watching that right now, liking that. Uh, another one that is an ongoing show is Haikyuu, <laughs> season three. Yeah. How are you enjoying season three? Oh You're a big, God. big fan. So, season three is just about the finals. This is it. They're at the corner quarter uh, prefecture qu- qualifier finals, um, <laughs> and I think this whole season is just going to be the matchup. Honestly, <laughs> like we're, they're like a couple episodes in now, and it's, it's uh, that the best best of three of um, no sorry best of five uh, from the typical best of three. So they're diving deep into this matchup. Like I. I don't want to. Hmm, you guys gotta watch. <laughs> yeah, who's yeah. who's caught up? No one. No one. Just no. Me? I never uh. have to start it. Haikyuu. Yeah, I haven't gotten to s- to start Haikyuu because I feel like I'll get obsessed. Oh yeah. With it. Oh no, you will. <laughs> <laughs> also, boys. So. Um, boys. Yes. All the boys. The sports boys. Boys and yeah, murder. Boys. I've heard those yeah. are some of like the best sports boys. Oh yeah. Those. No. A Haikyuu. lot of a lot of my friends' favorite sports boys. Haikyuu is <laughs> probably since watching it, it's one of my top sports anime ever. Ooh. Nice. Yeah. So, Haikyuu Season 3, happy now. Catch up so I can talk to you back because I don't want to spoil it for you. <laughs> uh, okay. But so far, yeah, it's very, yeah, it's 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 getting to the end and they're, it's getting intense. Um, so, Haikyuu Season 3, I'm also watching Poco's Udon World. <gasps> Me too. It's so cute. It is. So... That sounds uh, yummy. Su- is it Sumugi from, um, what was last season's uh, Little Honey. Girl? A sweet, yeah. Sweetness and Lightning. So, yeah. Poco Sweet. beats her out. I'm sorry. Whoa. Well, I don't, I've only seen the first episode. I haven't caught up, but I have to say Poco is just a little adorable tanuki and she's so cute and I love her. Is it a short or is it a full? No, it's, it's full. full. Okay. Yeah. It's a full episode. So if you liked sweet, Sweetness and Lightning and you liked, you know, adorable little girls, uh, you know. Is it a girl like, or a boy? I, I, I want to say it's a girl, it's but a I don't. It's a tanuki. It's a tanuki. I don't know. I swear it's a girl, but and, I don't know what I'm well, basing that on. I'm just we all know. Assuming. We all know tanukis. Or boys. Yeah. They are boys. <laughs> if they're very obviously. I mean, Tanukis don't have a concept of gender, so. Oh, there that's, you true. That's, that's true. That's true. But anyway, but. yeah, the premise is essentially um, <laughs> this guy goes back home. He's like taking a break. Oh, no, I think his, uh, he went back his, because his dad, his, died. his dad passed away. Um, so he took a break from work. And then his dad was a, a, a ramen. Uh, udon? U- oh, no, I, yeah, udon. he owned udon. udon. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's true, udon. Uh, yeah, his dad had an udon. <laughs> restaurants um, but because he passed away um, uh, you know it, it was it just you know, went out of business so yeah. he comes back to a closed business a cl- no one at home it's very yeah. sad um, and, uh, uh, and you know then he runs into Poco or uh, the Tanuki yeah. and then they're just who's hiding in a little rice cooker yes it's so <laughs> cute it's also creepy so yeah so <laughs> no, no, it's really cute it sounds creepy oh, but yeah. it actually was yeah. animated I very he, adorably okay, okay. Good. yeah what, Poke had like a, a potato sack <laughs> thing on him yeah right? didn't even have clothes <laughs> but uh yeah so he Poke just follows him around and he's like okay I guess I'll take care of you <laughs> I was gonna but, have udon for dinner and now I'm like will I be eating a little tanuki no no no, no, no. no. you're not gonna be eating the tanuki okay that doesn't happen yeah <laughs> really but cute. uh it's very cute it's very sweet um I like it a lot more than Sweetness and Lightning and oh. the characters, yeah, I, lo- I love everyone in that in there, honestly. 
Yeah. yeah, I have to I have to catch up with it, but I really yeah. liked the first episode. Yeah. It was just it was a good mix of humor mm-hmm. and cuteness and like traditional family, which yeah. I'm all I love family value shows. Yeah, yeah, those are my favorite. So yeah. yay! Aww. All right, and then uh, another one, Kiss Him Not Me. So yeah, yeah. trash. <laughs> so this is interesting. So I didn't know about this anime until Kelly started talking about. It. <laughs> now it's one of the anime that I'm actually committing to watching every week. Whoa, wow! <laughs> yes. And. Yeah, aside from the whole, like, you know, not eating for, like, a week thing at the beginning. Um, it's, the, it's The way they handled all of that was real yeah, bad. Yeah, it was real oh, bad. Oh, yeah, we talked about how that was real bad. Also, it's, why it's, it's trash. It's really bad. But, oh, my God. It's fine. I love it. Also, there's a JoJo reference. Yep. And oh, no wonder you love it. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. Aww. I mean, that's all I really need to do. Yeah, there's there's <laughs> to get JoJo and Attack on Titan. Attack on Titan, the yeah. There's a, there's a couple. Of, there's a good amount of references yeah, there. Because she's an otaku. I... Yeah, so we talked about this uh, last time, but yeah, I thought all of that was really bad. I did talk about how you could interpret it like the boys are bad for suddenly paying attention to her now that she's lost weight. Mm -hmm. Except for one of them. Except for one of them who was nice to her before. Mm -hmm. Um, Like, obviously, that's not how you really lose weight. (laughs) So um, definitely not in a healthy way. And definitely not in a healthy way. Uh, It's also anime. Um, But... So part of me was like, oh, that's really bad that like now she's pretty and has a nicer voice because she lost weight. That mm-hmm. the like, voice, that, thing the voice especially thing made me angry. Stupid. That bothered me a lot. What the heck? That that's bothered me a lot. Uh, but it wasn't enough to like make me stop watching the show. Yeah. Um, because I saw that there there's some potential for them to like really dive into like why the guys are not really dive into, but maybe address why the the guys are. Crappy. Gross for yeah, mm-hmm. I was trying to not swear. Um, <laughs> gross for for suddenly paying attention to her. But anyway, I also was just fangirling so hard. Uh, also, when she fangirls, oh my god, it's hilarious. When he kabe dons her, I just want to get, I just want to get kabe dons. <laughs> <laughs> it's really nice, yeah. Yeah. especially if there's two guys and they're in suits. Yeah, it like, <laughs> fucks It's really nice. Miranda's had all these amazing experiences. Nobunaga patted you on the head. You got double kabe doned. I want to get double kabe doned. <laughs> nice. I didn't do it. Just like the way he does it, because like she dresses him up as her husbando, because they do. Oh, yeah, 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 they yeah. do. Oh, well, I guess I don't want to spoil. No, it's fine. It, but no, go ahead. They do a cosplay cafe. Mm-hmm. I won't spoil like what happens yes. in the episode. They do a cosplay <laughs> cafe for the school festival, and she's like just so happy. She's like, she and I get to be with you. Yeah. And then he's dead. Kabe dons her and is like, don't forget I'm a real man. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> So it's like that and Yuri on Ice are the shows that when I'm watching, like screaming. Yeah. And so I only watch it when like my boyfriend's out at the gym or something. <laughs> well, like, yeah. During the third episode of Yuri on Ice, I was like looking around. Oh, I screamed. While, watch, while watching it on the computer at work, I was yeah. like, me too. I'm just like I like I don't want anyone to see this, but I can't look away right now. I yeah. So, so good. with kiss him not me that whole episode, I was just like oh my god. And of course, of course, I like the mean redhead the best. Of course, <laughs> I have Makes a sense. problem. I need to go to rehab for this. <laughs> <laughs> Megan Murphy, you know what's up. So um, so he's a jerk, and I absolutely do not like him as a person. But I'm like that Cobbett don't move was real good. <laughs> um, and then there's like the baby one who's like, I'm gonna show her my mom. Oh, yeah. And I <laughs> and was like, how? <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> gonna show up one night at your apartment and be like, I need you to teach me something. <laughs> I can't be the only one who went there with that episode. I'm I sorry. Did it. I swear I did it. <laughs> nope. I'm so surprised at myself. Not. Whatever, I'm gonna own my trash. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, I think this You're show adults. this That's show fine. is a guilty pleasure trash show that Another one for me, uh, in addition to Keijo, because I don't discriminate. I'll watch Keijo and I'll watch Kiss Him, Not Me, and I will enjoy both of them. Um, <laughs> Kiss Him, Not Me is a great, great palate cleanser for time. when I'm having a bad day. Like, it cheered me up so much on because this weekend I was just like in bed all weekend yeah. doing nothing, and I was like sleeping a bunch. And then I watched Kiss Him, Not Me, and then I was like, I'm ready to clean my room. <laughs> 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 I got up and I organized everything, and I organized all my otaku stuff. And I was like, here's all my manga, and I'm feeling good. I feel good about my life. <laughs> and so it was really helpful in that way. <laughs> all you need is a little boy on boy action to get that energy up. Woo! Oh, oh yeah! Well, it's by the way, at the extremely end, when, relatable. When they started dancing with each other, and then the girls are just like. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I like the girl in Yuri on Ice. What's her name? The one make. who got like a nosebleed. Oh, every time like said. Yuko or something. Yeah, something yeah. like that. I was like, I, where she, she just like avatar nosebleeds. <laughs> Hell yeah! She's like, I'm pregnant. Yuri is like, are you yeah, sick yeah, yeah. or something? Yeah, yeah. No, I. Like, <laughs> I feel like you could get pregnant watching Yuri on Ice. Like I just doesn't 
like Yuri say something quote. about that? Like, it's even a, I, as a man, yeah. could get pregnant watching Victor skate. <laughs> he wishes. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my God! When, uh, when like when, just when they embrace, we're on Yuri on Ice now. When they just you know, Victor, when Victor is just like Yuri, oh, and I'm like, Ugh. I feel like Katsudon was some sort of euphemism I was not getting. I, Am I wrong about that? Or is there? Just, I don't think like, so. I just think I he really know. likes Katsudon. That's just what he, he admit, to, food like, can be very erotic. Most about. Yeah, mm. but then, but then he realizes it's not about the pork cutlet. It's about Victor. <laughs> it's know. about. Hello. <laughs> I'm like, that, like tearing up a little bit. <laughs> like, when when he wins, Victor puts his arm around him. And I'm just like, oh, oh yeah. I'm just oh like, does, any, kiss, does, kiss. does anyone see this? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm Sorry, so guys. glad. I'm so glad we know up front that Yurio is 15 because I feel like the fandom would go out of control shipping him with people. And so I'm really glad we've avoided that out of the game. <laughs> I also, appreciate they've also, adults. They've also kept shows. him out of. Well, that the area too, like they, in the show. Yeah, mm-hmm. they haven't done a lot of fan service stuff with him. He's mostly just like cute and like the little angry. baby, and oh, I want to yeah. protect him. Oh. And I'm just like, you're so angry, and you need like <laughs> someone to love you, like in a parental way. I mean, like, like I just like I want him to know he's valuable, but he looks so mad. I just, <laughs> I'm really glad. I I think that's another strength of the show is that they've avoided any weirdness with him. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, they're doing all the shipping right is what you're is what you're saying. There's a lot of shipping there's a lot right on this There's a lot of there's a lot of a uh, hot. Well, it is at a hot spring. It, it is a hot spring, which is a very convenient location. But the hot spring thing is not as weird because that's normal. Yeah. So you gotta go in naked. Yeah, you gotta be it's naked. Fine. Yeah. That's why all the boys peep in all their anime. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, and it's us who are the peeping toms. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just love watching Callie <laughs> melt. I, I like, I live for this show now. I every, I realized that the next episode was in two days, and I was like, I don't know if I can wait. Is it two days? I watched it, it like within an hour of it going up at work. I'm like, I don't care how busy I am. I will work at home. <laughs> I don't get it done. I feel like, because I just sit around a bunch of dudes. I feel like all of them would be like, What are you watching? And I'd be like, Don't talk to me. (laughs) Or shut up, sit down, and watch this and love it as much as I do. (laughs) Do not interrupt my gay ice skating. (laughs) They don't even, they drop the pretense of like even just not being that thing. So have you heard the term queer baiting? Um, it's when something like hints at a gay relationship but never goes for it. And a lot of like fan service anime do that just by virtue of what the fan service is. Um, and so sometimes it can be really negative and sometimes it's just like what it is. Uh, like if it's not a really heavy thing, if it's not supposed to be graphic or if it's not supposed to be super romantic, sometimes it's not queer baiting, it's just how the show is done. It's agape. But, but this one, this one just is not a sh- We're like, we're, this is gay. This is just really just gay, and here you go. And I was like, yeah. yeah. Although, if, if it never got physical, like, Amanchu never got physical. It was all about that. Like I said, like, I that agape, like, pure yeah. love. And that's that's mm-hmm. fine. Like, we should celebrate that as well. But I'm just saying, if you're on ice, watch to go there. Yeah, it'll be fun if they kiss. Yeah. <laughs> oh, just man. Saying. Anyway. Can you imagine the doujinshi? So, oh, it's probably already out there. Oh, it's already out there. Um, it's gotta be. Mike. <laughs> yeah. How is Iron Blooded Orphan season two? <laughs> oh, Iron Blooded. <laughs> nice segue, man. <mate. laughs> uh, well, I mean, there's no ice skating, but um, it's it's. So now, if you haven't seen season one, I'm gonna try not to spoil it for you. Um, but essentially, they're re- rebuilding. They are the the Tekadon or the orphans are now a a, a big. Source of power. They they are they're popular. Um, they're getting more okay. money. They're getting a lot of workers now. People are coming to them to join Tekadon, and so they're they're, they're you, you'll see a lot of scenes where people they're training like newbies, and then there'll be kids, and they're like, "Come on, like catch up!" And it's like adults are like, "What?" <laughs> you know. So it's it's really it's really fun that way. But um, I've only seen uh the first two episodes because I'm trying. It's really hard to like keep up. Sure, there's like a t- we've talked about a ton. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's ridiculous. Uh, but um, so far, I mean, yeah, it's just more Iron Blooded Orphans. Like literally, his the um the Gundam Barbados comes from the sky, like in season one. What you'll see, and uh, he lands and it's like I'm here. I'm like, well, I'm ready. <laughs> so uh, Gundam Iron Blooded Orphans. I mean, it's uh, it's. I'm not quite sure where the. Uh, who this is going to be the enemy for this time around? Like it's mm-hmm. they kind of went all out for season one, mm-hmm. um, and people like p- 
people have changed. They've, they've been promoted to different seats of power. So it's going to be interesting to see what the main uh, conflict is. I haven't figured that out yet. But mm-hmm. Iron Blood Orphans 2, not We're bad. Good. Yeah. good. Yeah. I need to catch up on that one. Um, yeah. They recently, I think, were airing it on Toonami. Oh, they did oh that's right. They have the dubs, yes. That's pretty cool. That's right. Yeah. Um, that's cool. Also, out, it's Code Geass. I just need to like mention that just because it's like, just because it has been on license for so long and now that it is and I think now it's I think entirely on Funimation now because they only had it out for the Blu-ray mm-hmm. um, they only had the first few episodes but I think they've put them all up digitally so please if you have not watched it watch it because it's <laughs> fantastic how many episodes of Code Geass again? Uh, there's two seasons and I think it's about 50 episodes okay. cool. oh that's totally. a lot but it's it's doable it is oh, if, yeah. you, if, you, totally if it's really good it. totally. also yeah. can I quickly give a shout out to <laughs> March Comes In Like a Lion I feel like that is a show that handles depression really, really well. Oh. And I think that's important because we haven't, I can't remember if we talked about it yet or not. No, but we I, haven't, no. But it's, a, uh, it's about a 17-year-old professional shogi player. Uh, something obviously happened in his past, and he's having a little bit of PTSD mm. uh, over it, and he's very, very depressed in the first episode. And I love the use uh, of water because when you're depressed, you always feel like you're drowning. Everything is slow, you can't breathe, you're overwhelmed, and there's a lot of water that's used as visuals that's really stunning. Um, and I just wanted to give it, it's very rare to see anime tackle anything like that. Like we had Raced earlier this year, which orange. tackles, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, and Orange, which, which oh, tackles these sure. sort of more serious adult type of shows. Um, but I really liked that this show has a lot of amazing visuals to go along with what the character is feeling, so it makes it more visceral. Um, yeah. Just a warning, though, if you do watch it, the first episode is very heavy. Like, it's I really could heavy. not make it through it. Like oh, it was wow. just yeah. it was too heavy for me. I right actually now. cried. Yeah, it was like I'm, a little too much. Wow. I'm worried so. about watching it, honestly. Uh, just as somebody who has experienced it, I'm really sure. worried. Uh, so I haven't watched it. Yeah, yet. it could be cathartic, so just, but also yeah, you need to know going in that yeah. effective. So like, be a little ready for that whenever yeah. you go in. Just. Yeah. Especially in the fall when there's like seasonal affective disorder. Don't want to get seasonal depression on top of the anime depression. Yes, and I get that <laughs> very heavily. So yeah, I was not yeah. prepared when I watched the show. So I, I'm glad that Miranda was like, hey, heads up. This is so, a yeah, very heavy just, first episode. I'll watch, I'll watch it and then I'll watch Yuri on Ice. Yeah. Yes, no, that's the yeah. perfect. That is exactly what I actually did. <laughs> really? I actually watched. Did it help? Oh, yes. Okay. I, I forgot about everything when I was watching Yuri on Ice. So I was like, I just want to be in this world yeah, that, right now. That sounds like something I'd find really interesting, but I'm actually afraid to um, watch it. It's like, yeah, sorry. Uh, do you want to talk about one more show, Mike, before uh, we head off into the watch Yeah, class, sure. I mean, there, there's so many that I've kind of... Yeah, you have so like, many. You yeah, you have a ton. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Save me. Um, but uh, Blood, Blood, <laughs> uh, Blood Divorce is one that was recommended to me. Um... And it is essentially they're they're vampires in here, obviously blood, um, <laughs> but they're kind of like well, you could say but iron blooded orphans aren't yeah, vampires. Yeah, that's that's plot true. twist. Yes, they are. <laughs> oh, that's anyway. a new antagonist, a yeah. vampire. They all get bit. Yeah, <laughs> cool. And in their so surprise, yeah. blood, of, blood of wars is about vampires. I saw the art, uh, like the poster art for uh-huh. it. Yeah. yeah, I thought it looked sort of weird. I wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I wasn't a fan of it. Like, just I mean, from from you know first impressions, but. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's okay. Like uh, I only seen the first episode, and essentially, they live in a world where vampires exist. Everyone knows them too. Like they wear these uh, neck braces, and it, it lights up when they start to like get this hunger. And so yeah, uh, and Ooh, they have, that sounds help the vampires. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, I know. But um, and there's a, a force, a police force that deals with that. But um, it's interesting. They had this um, kind of like a they shoot they they. They went. They they stole some stuff from a bank, and as you do. it's like the, like typical. Like I'm, I wasn't quite sure where it was going, but at the very end there was a twist, and literally that's the only thing that made me want to see episode two. Wait, the vampires rob a money bank or a blood yeah, bank? No, mo- <laughs> money bank. It's yeah, it's, it's dead serious. It just really makes like it's like they're they're just vampires and they're just like okay, hey, we want to get money and all that. Like it, I'm not. W- gotta get, you gotta have, get I mean, that money. You have no idea where they come yeah. from. You just know that they, you just know that they exist. You know that. The humans know that they exist, and there's a police force for them. Um, and then there's like a huge chase scene, and then something happens at the end, which I'm not going to talk about. Um, but it, also because I haven't seen the next episode. <laughs> but uh, but uh, that, that's literally the only thing that's pulling me to watch the rest of it. Hmm. It's really weird, and also it's the same uh, producers from uh, Hitori no Shita, the Outcast from last season, oh. which I was not a fan of. 
No, I don't yeah. think anyone was a fan of it. Yeah, no, yeah. I saw there was like, you know how they have those studio uh, intros at the beginning, like their branded name and like, yeah. oh, hey, Toei. Like, oh, cool, Toei. And then I saw it. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> what it's am like, I kidding uh, myself into? And then I saw it. And then the, yeah, I mean, Aww. it's 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 okay. I, I probably wouldn't recommend it. Uh, but I'll check out to see what else is like. So I watch a show with blood in it. And the time I watch Blood Blockade Battlefront because that's a good show about blood. Ah. Oh, I still need to watch that. That's real good. Ah. Oh, Alliteration. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Um, I mean, I guess I'll, st- I'll stop Bank there. robbing vampires. Yeah. I mean, I, for that first episode anyway. I guess I'll just let us know if we should even try with it if you're going to watch yeah. more episodes. Or any other cool. shows. Yeah. This yeah. false. Yeah. Um, there's a few more that I want to check up on, but. Oh, yeah. We'll yeah. I watched a ton, but I didn't have time yeah, to. Yeah, we can't. We've already gone look at all of them. Lot. Yeah, we got to go. Yeah. We um, still got a long watch party. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but let us know what you guys are watching this fall season. You can write in to us. You can talk to our Facebook group because our Facebook group is the best. Sorry, I'm breaking down. <laughs> I was like, what's going on? It is the best. <laughs> my, mind, my mind is just melting because of Yuri on Ice right now. I'm just yeah. like, oh, so it's, good. Facebook.com slash group slash IGN Anime Club. It's the <laughs> official group. You can email us at IGN underscore Anime Club at IGN.com. And you can tweet at us using the hashtag IGNMA, IGN, I-M-E. Yeah. Thank you, Callie. I was yeah. hoping you would come in and assist. <laughs> okay. I think I remember um, that someday. Seriously. And with that, you'll get it. You'll get it. <laughs> with that, with that, we're going to go on to the watch party where Megan and I are going to bounce out because we barely made time to get to, to this episode because we miss you guys. <sighs> we miss all of you. Yes, mm-hmm. we do. I'm so sad. Um, this was but, such a fun episode, too. Yeah, and so Mike and Kelly, we're going to yeah. take away the watch party. It. We'll take it. Um, yes. Episode 17 please, to Please stick 20. around. And, yeah, because we got some interesting stuff from the Facebook group, actually, yep. um, so, that we're going to read. We'll uh, you bye, guys. guys. Bye. We'll, let, we'll let you exit gracefully. Yes. Oh, we'll, we'll check out my World of Final Fantasy World of Final Fantasy <laughs> review on the site. It should be live by the time you watch this. I can't talk. Oh. Check out IGN Wikis, please. Thank you. <laughs> please. <laughs> IGN Wikis. And what a fine person. All right. Bye. <laughs> Bye, guys. Let's cut it some off. Um, <laughs> all right. All right. Psychopaths. So, Psychopaths, episode 17 through 20. This is. Uh, I feel like I can just like lounge on this whole area now. <laughs> I know. We're like, yeah. oh, these figures are mine now. <laughs> um, actually, I ordered that saber, so it's fine. Nice. Um, yeah. So. Uh, wow, that was a lot of information. Um, <laughs> in Psychopaths, I mean, like, just there was so oh. much going on. Um, so yes. also four episodes. Four episodes to cover, so we're going to go through this pretty quickly, but I have some thoughts, and also I'm still sad about Kagari, rip. Yeah. Um, okay, <laughs> Australia's card says, as Kozoburo was going on about attaining omnipotence and becoming a god, the anime shows the creation of Adam, a fresco painting originally painted on the Sistine Chapel ceiling from 1508 to 1512 by the famous Michelangelo. Mm. I, th- I feel like it's, it's pronounced the, like, Michelangelo. Touching, it's right? Um, right? Yes. It's the, it's like the, the finger. finger. Like this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that because that means one of us was god and I'm not comfortable with that. Um, oh, this painting you, reflects you on how the civil system gives Kozoboro new life and how Kozoboro is like the civil system, literally. However, mm. Kozoboro alone will never be equal to the collective consciousness of the system, which is further enforced as Makishima mercil- mercilessly breaks his android body. Kozoboro begs for life like a human would, showing how he doesn't possess the godly omnipotence he just bragged about before. Um... So basically, the chief is just a vessel for mm-hmm. a variety of uh, consciousnesses. Yes. Um, who make up the civil system? Mm-hmm. And I, 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 this blew my mind. I have not seen Psychopath before. <laughs> I like when it was like, oh yeah, the civil system is just like a bunch of psychopaths. No pun intended. Like <laughs> actual sociopaths. Because that's pretty much, at least my interpretation of criminally asymptomatic, peop- asymptomatic people mm-hmm. is that's like a textbook sociopath. Yeah. Um, and so all of them are just like, we're like, we're the most logical and objective people because we know we, we have no feelings. Or I'm like, oh my God, what? I was surprised that um, that particular brain was, you know, turned on, I guess. Yeah. When he was talking to Makishima, because um, he's like, "Remember me?" I'm like, uh, "Well, what? that's why they sent him because they knew each other from the past." But the thing that the, the fact that they can send different brains. Yeah, like, well, what? like it, you plug into the body, yeah. you like basically download your consciousness into the body, so he inhabits the chief's body, and the chief just like no longer exists 
as an individual. It's like an entity That's that they scary. inhabit. Mm -hmm. um, I found it fascinating that the the whole idea of the civil system was an objective, you know, piece of soft well, not piece of software, but like this this um, computer essentially to just put it in the simplest terms. But this data mm -hmm. can objectively judge people. That was the whole concept. That's what sold people on it. Mm -hmm. Was it's not people. It's not like subjective. It's just this objective. Um, Entity, like judge, yeah, <laughs> that has been programmed to judge with no emotion, and then it turns out it was just people the whole time, yeah. and, and the crazy I, ones at that exactly. Yeah, I'm like, uh, just, anyway. <laughs> there are so many brains in that room, by the way. There are too many brains. I'm like, oh my god. Like, just like, how many years too... were they collecting? To be honest, yeah. There's so there's 247 people currently making up the civil system. That's right. Yeah. Um and. 200 work at any one time, I guess. Um, okay, so con continuing with Australia's card. Lastly, Makshima mentioned how Kozoboro reminded him of the Balnabarbian, <laughs> whatever, doctor from Golarov's travels. This doctor insisted that by cutting the brains of political party leaders in half, exchanging these halves with the other, and sewing them back together, the two half brains would debate between themselves and become more moderate as a result. Which is like, that's, not at all how that works. That's not true. <laughs> like, that's just not how that works. Um, <laughs> an idealistic thinking that those who follow politics would approve of. Uh, I still don't approve of it because it's just not how it works. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, the sarcasm kicks in when you realize that this project is one of the numerous projects designed to fix the mismanagement of Balnabarbia by increasing the efficiency of everyday activity significantly. However, none of these projects were brought to perfection and the whole country lay in waste in the meantime. In other words, the civil system just made the world worse as we've seen this far in the anime. So. Yes. About five episodes ago, I was fully on board with just a revolution. <laughs> like, I, I have been so on board with just overthrowing the civil system before I found out any of this, mm -hmm. before I found out the truth about it that was run by sociopaths, <laughs> criminally asymptomatic, and people who are idiosyncratic with society. Five, six episodes ago, I was like, <laughs> we should really overthrow the civil system. And now I'm like, why aren't you guys letting him do... <laughs> <laughs> like, Makishi was terrible. He's a murderer. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. But, like, I kind of think he has a point. I just want, I just think maybe you should let him finish the revolution and then capture him. Just let him finish. <laughs> just, just let him push it. Push just a it little bit. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I'm so on board with the revolution. It's not even <laughs> funny. Um, okay, moving on to episode 18. Yep. Uh, By the way, that's a really great uh, analogy. Oh, not analogy. Um... Is an analysis like all those <gasps> yeah. and uh, assisting chapel stuff. I didn't catch I've any never, of that stuff. I've never read Gull Gulliver's Travels. I was never, I never had to, <laughs> um, and so I just never did. Uh, which is not true. I mean, like I've read other books that I didn't have to read. It's just not to say I don't read books. But yeah, I just I, haven't read I, I that one. So I never picked that stuff up. It's nice. But I'm glad you guys did. Yes. Um, okay. Australia's card again, who is basically the MVP of the Psychopaths Watch Party. Uh, we've had. I mean, we have lots of MVPs, but oh, yeah. I feel like. Australia is always coming through with the analysis. So Australia says, a promise w written on water. Just as water distorts your reflection, Kogami's promise to remain a detective rather than regressing into a dog can be interpreted differently than Akane expected. Akane wanted Kogami to retain his dignity and not throw away his integrity and morals, but in order to be a detective, Kogami has to go rogue. The civil system was clearly more interested in pursuing further perfection in its operations than in protecting the safety of the people, which is its prime di directive. Kagami understood that this hypocrisy would never allow Makishima to be prosecuted fairly, so out of fear of regretting his inaction, should he remain an enforcer, he betrayed Akane. The scenes leading up to Kogami's defection from D Division 1 were very moving due to the somber music. Oh, I so agree. That scene was so good. Oh, where, man. like, she's reading his... Uh, his letter. His yeah. letter, and, yeah. Um... While we may be rooting for Kogami finally moving out to kill the psychopath, we are also sad that such a righteous character must become a criminal to carry out justice in this Tristan world. So I do disagree with that because I don't think Kogami is a righteous person. I think he's morally gray, and that's what I like about him. Mm -hmm. I think Kogami, first and foremost, wants to solve crimes. He wants to yeah. be a detective. Yeah, but, well, that's what he wanted to be since he was a kid. Right, yeah. but... Akane's version of being a detective and Kogami's are different. Uh, Akane is very justice driven mm -hmm. and virtue driven and she's driven by what is right. Uh, Kogami uh, it has a lot of different motivations. In this case, uh, 
the old guy, I forget his name, uh, for some reason I can't. No. Whatever the old man one is. Uh, G Ch I'm just gonna call him Ji Chen. So <laughs> he, uh, he was saying that this is a man's pride. The, Kogami is driven by his pride. He can't not solve this because what would he do to, like, how would he live with himself? Number one, because Makshima is going to kill people. And also, like, he knows he can do it, so he's going to go do it. Mm -hmm. And so I just, I think that Kogami, like, for me, I don't, I'm not disappointed in Kogami. I'm like, D yeah, go. What? <laughs> <laughs> do your thing. I, I I must be bad or something. I I would not be in Akane's shoes. I'd be like, yeah, can I come with? Like, <laughs> um, no, I think it's about time. I mean, like Kogami has always had been conflicted, especially with um, I'm really bad with these names. Uh, the other Kanoza. Kanoza. Like yeah. they never they, they always butt heads, right? Yeah. And like, I hate Kinoza. It, it's gone to the point where like you know this psych the sociopath is out. He's trying to like scheme mm -hmm. for the next big thing. And the th and the big scheme he had before was already like huge. He started right across the city. Yeah. And then like all these helmets and it was um that's that's as almost as big as you can get. So whatever he's scheming next, he has to take them down. Like, yeah. Immediately. And I mean, yeah, if he wants to do his job as it was yeah. prescribed. Um, I, mean, I don't like Ginoza. I think Ginoza. Um, he's weaselly to me. He's <laughs> Maybe he, he doesn't looks like have a he doesn't have he he's everything that Kogami is not. They're very good foils to each other, mm -hmm. and that Kogami is is driven by his own will in a lot of ways. And mm -hmm. a lot of people who live under the civil system are not. Ginoza is the ultimate bureaucrat in that he uh, is a very good cog in the machine, mm -hmm. um, as we see when uh, the chief is holding the dominator uh against kogami um uh, and she makes it lethal mode and then and then akane is just like i got this and shoots him with the stun gun thank or whatever God, <laughs> um i was so nervous yeah uh i was like i hope megan murphy's okay um <laughs> <laughs> but um i think like he is very good at being a pawn for others it seems um because he doesn't have his own compass He's his compass follower. is what has been given to him mm -hmm. and that is why i don't like him at all but he's a very good um yeah. reflection of the things that kogami lacks like mm -hmm. kogami does lack discipline mm -hmm. um yeah no the system made him a follower so it, yeah having being an inspector and leading these uh, other uh uh you know the enforcers enforcers yes Sorry. um yeah he, he's definitely not fit for that role yeah and that's what you can see right now um i'm gonna move on just because we're running out of time yep. nettle Toro says apparently shooting kogami is akane's way of leveling up as an inspector two birds with one stone though because by doing that she also smacked ginoza out of his dumbfoundedness not only from that very moment but hopefully in the big picture as well here's to akane Yes. Yes. I love that scene because she shows that she has what it takes to have free will. And later, I forget if it's episode 19 or 20, but we do have that flashback to Akane. Ha she got to choose her life because she was good for anything. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll get to that in a little bit. But she, like Kogami, doesn't didn't become a follower because of the civil system. She is evolving past that. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just loved that moment where she she found another way to deal with the, the situation. Yes. Um, moving on to episode 19, Tyler yeah, DeBoer. Tyler DeBoer. Would you like to do the honor? Yeah, sure. So Tyler DeBoer <laughs> says, uh, final stretch, here we go. Uh, Kogami's gone to take the law into his own hands. Even his new weapon, a normal pistol, shows this. A dominator requires Cybal's judgment. Oh, yeah. So yeah, uh, he has a normal pistol now. Uh, one thing I find interesting is during Kogami and Saiga's breakfast is the imaging of Makashima also being there. The fact that Kogami is able to imagine what exactly Makashima would say and respond shows just how close the two ways of thinking have been and gotten over time. Yeah, that was... I Yeah, I like that scene a lot because it shows that they are more alike each other than he wants to admit. Mm -hmm. And his his professor, his former professor even says that basically like you're, you guys are alike. And Kogami doesn't like that knowledge, but yeah. it's very clear that they have a lot in common. And I find that interesting. It's sort of like any any good rivalry. Like, I don't know. It almost reminds... Because Makishima reminds me of the Joker a lot. Mm -hmm. um, it just it felt like Batman <laughs> and the Joker a lot. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> but yes, uh, he continues. Um, 
Definitely a scary thing in this episode is Makashima's new plan. By taking out the food supply, he'll cause a domino effect that will destroy the civil system. The scary part isn't this. It's the real-world application of the hyper-oats? Oh, hyper-oats. <laughs> uh, by depending on only one source, should someone take it out, everything involved will fall about. We're living in an age where, we, where we're heading towards this in life. One such example is our computerization of many aspects of our lives. By having many things be based on electronics, the internet, and computers in general, should anyone find a way to destroy our electronic infrastructure, we as society will be crippled. That's the basis for Y2K. Uh, yeah. oh, for anybody yeah. who is uh, any amount of years younger than me, because I am barely old enough to remember Y2K, <laughs> um, uh, there was this huge thing where uh, society was really starting to rely on computers more and more, yeah. but uh, they, when they were programming a lot of these computers, they didn't... Re- account for the years rolling over. So everything would be like 99 and whatever in the coding. I don't know if it was in, if it like had to do with the binary or whatever it Uh was, whatever in the back end of the computer, they didn't account for like it being zero, zero. Um, So it was gonna totally screw everything up. And there was this huge panic, like everything's gonna be on fire. There's a Simpsons episode about it. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Just like everything's going to be destroyed because we were relying on computers so much. And even now Mm. I think like if I lost my phone, um, oh man! There's a couple numbers I know, and then I don't. I would not be able to call anybody else. Um, That happened to a friend of mine. Um, We were at a bar. She went outside. She was texting, and just as she was texting on the street, some guy on a bike just took her phone out of her hand and kept going. Whoa. And so we come out of the bar, and she's like, can I use someone's phone to call an Uber because I can't get home now? Holy crap. Like, we rely on technology a lot. So mm-hmm. Tyler has a point, and the point is, um, this is, I, I think this is true for a lot of Society. things in Psychopaths. Uh-huh. Uh, it's closer to home than you might think it is. I mean, it's very far future, not far future, but it's yeah. future sci-fi. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's obviously written by modern people and therefore has connections to the modern yeah. age. Yeah, no, totally. All right. Uh, he continues, uh, as an old saying goes, you shouldn't put all our eggs in one basket. Should any society, whether real or fake, put too much of their lives in one place, any little distortion will greatly impact their lives. Uh, with the calm before the storm done, we're heading for our final confrontation with Mak- Makishima and Akane is about to learn the truth. Ooh. Um, I really... Just, I want to reiterate, I don't think he should stop Makishima. Am I a bad person? I really think think that it would probably be best for everybody if they just destroyed the civil system. And they have, the civil system has this conversation with Akane where it's telling her the truth. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Um, And because it's like, oh, you won't tell anyone because you value the civil system. The the civil system gives you the things that you value most. It gives Mm -hmm. you order and it gives you know, the best chance for everyone's happiness. And of course, all of that talk is just alarm bells in my head um, (laughs) because that there's lots of books about this. So um, we've been here before and it's like, we made a utopia and it's like, just kidding, it's not. Mm -hmm. Um, So I don't know, I just, I really hate the civil system and I'm just really in favor of just overthrowing it completely. I I mean, there's probably, Probably a more del- like a more uh, graceful way to do it because yeah. society would be totally a wreck, like just a total wreck if you didn't do it. Like we're gradually gonna uninstall this. I don't <laughs> I don't know how you what the uh, you know how do you what do you do without the sub or how withdraw to withdraw plan is yeah <laughs> yeah. So that's what I was thinking about when I was watching this episode is like how what is a better way what is a less catastrophic way to dismantle the civil system I don't know yeah um, like I I. I th- I don't know. Like when they captured a uh, Makashima, they didn't even have like anyone to prosecute him. Because well, yeah, and then like a no Ak- system in place. Akane's like, we might, we'll have to like assemble a judge and like prosecutors and a jury. And I'm like, is anyone even trained in the law anymore? Like, there's no law. The yeah. law is the is civil system. No they don't have to system. know the law. Yeah. The dominators tell them the law, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. or the dominators do the sentencing. Rather, the yeah. dominators are the judges. So an executioner. Yeah, judge, jury, and executioner. Ayo. So, um, I I feel like just it sounds like other countries besides Japan have normal societies. They kept uh, the civil system tells her that they kept it basically trade secrets, and um, you know they have really strict border security, and mm. it, they don't import any food, which is why the hyper oats thing is such a big deal. So mm. they're very isolated from the rest of the world. It sounds yeah. like. Um, which 
leads me to believe that there's like other countries have more uh, human systems in place, I guess. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, the civil system is technically human. Mm, mm. That's a good point. Like, <laughs> but bad yeah, no, choice I, of words. I know, I know what you're saying. Yeah. Um, um, I, yeah. If they if they did if there's if this with the civil system most likely probably going to fail, um, I'm sure they can recover. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then uh, to wrap it up, Tyler mm-hmm. DeBoer says. Uh, for episode 20, the truth is revealed to Akane. That's what we were just talking about. Mm-hmm. Uh, with Makishima off getting his entry to the facility, uh, which is the hyper oats, uh, the, gra- the granary, mm-hmm. uh, murder a dude, cutting out his eyeballs and skinning his hand. Okay, so that was so brilliant. <laughs> where, hey, you know, the granary probably has old timey biometric scans, not cymatic scans. So I'm going to take his eyes and fingertips. So. One of those is gonna get me in. I was like, "That's that's some thinking." Good job, Makishi. <laughs> I don't know. I'm like, I'm sort of rooting for him. I yeah, would just cut off his hand. No. no. Yeah, rather than having to carry individual like, fingers, you might. Eh. Anyway. Anyway, um, <laughs> Akane is led to the base of the civil system. The fact that Akane is angered by the system's murder of Kagari and calls it useless shows just how much she's grown from the wet behind the ears meat girl in the beginning. I like that too, where she's like, "Did Kagari die here?" And she just like faces them head on. Uh, When Akane calls out the civil system and demands the criminal minds in it be judged for their actions, and it responds with how its contributions outweigh their previous crimes, it reminded me a little of USA's Operation Paperclip. At the tail end of World War II, ah, Tyler, you're speaking my language. (laughs) America went into Germany and captured their high-level scientists. Bringing them back to America, they were given the choice to rot Uh, to rot in jail for their crimes or help American society advance using their knowledge and have their crimes overlooked. It was this that allowed science to advance in the U.S., doing such feats Mm. as uh, being most of what got America to the moon. Um, Yeah, it's one of those... That's interesting. I mean, there's a lot of scientific things that originated from really terrible origins, a lot of uh, yeah. human experimentation, for example. Yeah. I just read this article about uh, how hormonal hormonal birth control um, was originally, like, forced on... Puerto Rican women, um, and they didn't tell them what it was for. And the side wow. effects at the time in the 50s and 60s were so bad that nobody wanted to take it anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, they also lied to women saying it was a fertility drug. Um, but it's one of those things that a lot of people are really happy to have. It, it helps with a lot of different medical issues. So um, a lot of medical advancements are from terrible origins. Yeah. So it makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but Operation Pla- Paperclip is a great example of a trade off. Um, I feel like that happened a lot in uh in it happened a lot more in the past. I mean, obviously there's things we don't know sure. about that are going on now that we'll yeah. probably find out about in ten years and go, oh. Um <laughs> whoops. But yeah. yeah, the the concept of we can either punish you or we can use you to our advantage mm-hmm. um is very morally gray and I find it very interesting. Yeah. But the civil system basically decided for itself that it was useful. So that's the difference. Is like it wasn't somebody being like, "Oh, you could help us advance." It was like a bunch of sociopaths going, "You know what? We did some bad stuff, but like we're really helping society." So, <laughs> I mean, it's like balancing out. <laughs> like, so um, yeah. I'm actually not even sure. Like, they, they don't really go deep into who even started this episode, right? No, or, really, or how um, it came to be. Like, oh, hey, if we collected these groups of people, you know, this would work. Yeah, they didn't really go into that. <laughs> Um, anyway, yeah. uh, back to Tyler. Akane's done some soul searching and has come out of the other side a, str- a better, stronger person. She's now flat out basically threatening the civil system. Mm-hmm. She's taken the leadership of our group and is now the critical thinker. Oh, Godol yeah. Kogami lifts, lefts, or left our team Makishima's whereabouts. With him there too, all the pieces are in place for our finale. Yes. It's sad that we only have one watch party left for Psychopaths. This is a great series and it's been so insightful. Anyway, here's to the next next time's finale. So yeah, cheers to that. Yeah, there the next time we'll be watching episodes twenty one and twenty two, and that mm-hmm. is the the last, the last two, two episodes. episodes. We're only doing season one of Psychopaths, so yes. after that we'll have a new watch party. Mm-hmm. I do want to wrap up though, um, about Akane's growth, and this is what I was hinting to earlier, is um when she has that series of flashbacks where she's talking to people and she she's talking to her friends, she's talking to Kagari about how you know, when she gets her results from the, the final exam um, or whatever. Um, I like that flashback. Yeah, it was such a really well done flashback. Mm-hmm. But uh, she gets the results and it's like, you know, I it didn't make it any easier for me because Sybil, Sybil is supposed to pick the thing that's best for me. But if I can do anything, then I am back at square one, basically. Yeah. Um, and Kagari basically tells her that, or told her in the past, that 
that is how it used to be. That is how people used to be. And he didn't think he'd meet anyone who still thought that way, still mm. thought, who still struggled with what they wanted to be. Um, and she says that, you know, she's happier for it. Yeah. And I mean, that was the, the most poignant moment for me about, um, you know, civil system is all about. I mean, on paper, all about giving people their maximum potential for happiness by saying this is what you would be most happy doing because you are best at it and you like it or whatever the test entails. Yeah. Um, but the truth of it is sometimes the journey is more important than the destination and that's what makes you happy. Mm-hmm. Um, experience. Yeah, right. and the experience of struggling to figure out what you want to be um, or who you want to be or who you are is more rewarding than just being told, well, you'd be really good at office jobs. There you go, go be happy now. Yeah. Um, and I just, I liked that they really drove that home in this episode. Oh yeah, no, especially this episode for me is when Akane definitely hit that like optimist spot for like just being the ideal inspector. Like when she started breaking down the scene back at the Hyper Oats dude mm-hmm. office. <laughs> oh yeah, she totally channels Kogami where she's oh, like, yeah, exactly. oh Kogami wouldn't have done it this way mm-hmm. if not for a reason. So mm-hmm. I'm going to find, so yeah, she's just grown so much. And yeah. I do think it's one of those things that, I mean, we've talked a lot about uh, like personal stuff with this watch party. And so if you are at a place where you are struggling with like who, not knowing who you are, your identity, or what you want to do with your life. If, you know, a lot of people are kind of in college or just getting into college, um, that's a really hard time. And a lot of times you don't know what you want to major in and you don't know what you want to do with your life, but it's mm-hmm. okay because the whole point is figuring it out. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, the process of figuring it out being the part that's valuable. Um, so I hope that that realization helps some people. This has been a very heavy show, um, but there's also a lot of bright spots in it, and that was one for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and just seeing her growth and seeing her be strong and um, confident in her abilities and yes. and just good at what she does, and not not knowing that this was going to be for her, but following her dream and it's a path that took her somewhere really great for herself uh, was just really really awesome. Uh, Akai is one of the probably strongest uh, female protagonists that I've in anime that I know, honestly. Yeah, really well done yeah. character. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, so with that, we really do have to go. Yeah, oh my god, how long has it been? <laughs> uh, it's been a while. So uh, thank you for joining us for Anime Club IGN Anime Club episode sixty nine. Next week we'll be back with Watch Party Psychopaths mm-hmm. episodes twenty 21. and twenty two, twenty one and twenty two. Oh my go. god, <laughs> um, and that'll be our last Psychopaths Watch Party. Yes. Um, yeah, uh, on that note, you can find Megan on Twitter at M-E-G-H-A-N underscore I-G-N. You mm-hmm. can find Miranda at Havoc Rose, Havoc with a K. You can yep. find Mike. At xpm and You can find me at Inky Dojiko, I-N-K-Y-D-O-J-I-K-K-O. We will see you next time. Yes. Yeah, anime. Yeah, anime. Bye. Bye. <laughs>